Hello my friends, last week I painted the spare trucks and exhaust and today I am going to finish the missing tarps and do the painting to prepare the model for last step of weathering. The two component green stuff is quite good for this task and seems even better than the black milliput to me. To be more specific I am not saying that milliput is bad but it's not the best choice for this task. If you want to see more of my tarp work check out the Hellcat video series. Green stuff is more compact and flexible and easier to work with when placing folds. Of course it likes to stick to the surface so to make it easy to roll I used baby powder and a spray can. It takes a few minutes to get it right because the mass is quite dense but it's worth the effort. It's always a bit of mess just like working with pigments but I don't know any other way to get it. Once the thickness was right I cleaned both sides with a brush. Even if it seems that everything is already swept, after drying there will be particles that have stuck to the tarpaulin surface for good. Fortunately they won't be visible after painting. Earlier I prepared a paper template and measured out the needed piece. After cutting it turned out that I didn't measure enough and added a piece from the cut edges. Of course I always try to use as much material as possible so in a moment I will make additional rolled tarps from what is left. For a good arrangement and formation of the tarps a brush and water will be useful which will definitely facilitate this work. The big advantage of green stuff is that even if something goes wrong we can repeat the molding process again without major consequences. That is, if you place a tarp and you don't like what you did you can easily take it off, straighten it and try again. Modeling takes a long time because you need to check if the tarp is properly smoothed and looks natural everywhere. As you can see earlier I forgot about the antenna and now I can easily arrange the folds to make them look natural. In addition I also cut two patches that will look cool when painted with uh, different colors. As I mentioned I prepared additional elements from the leftovers which I will put on the model. They will lie on the top of each other so the even shapes aren't necessary as it won't be completely visible. At the edges of the tarps and patches I added small cuts to be sewing lines. Of course they can also be painted and appropriately highlighted with shading but this method gives the possibility of additional use of wash to emphasize details. I clean all the pieces of the baby powder a little more and at the same time smooth the surface. The second tarp on the engine plate was made in the same way and all procedures were the same. Leaving the model to dry for some time I decided to go for a bike ride with my son. The weather was quite good and it didn't rain despite heavy clouds. 100% autumn all around but you can relax and do a little reset. Truly speaking I live in a such a nice place that after 15 minutes of cycling each way I can find a good environment to rest.
After going back I added a couple small tarps more and now it was completely ready for painting. Before I started painting I took off all the unglued elements to make my work easier. For painting I will use a metal holder from RP Tools with magnetic ends. I glued the round magnets to the model and as you can see it sticks quite tightly. I will take them off later because I don't have any more and I will quickly mask the unpainted places. It's very useful tool and as you can see the model can be rotated in all directions. Now it's time to work with chemicals. I cleaned the whole model with the model degreaser which removes dirt and particles of dirt that appeared on the model during construction. It's especially important to remove the remains of the baby powder because there is still a little bit of it on the tarps but also on the other elements of the model. It can be used on all surfaces and materials. I have plastic, resin, metal, green stuff and 3D printing here. The drying time is a great advantage because you can paint the model with just a few minutes after the cleaning is finished. It's definitely faster than washing the model with water and liquid. I recommend this stuff for all of you. At the very beginning the metal parts were covered with a metal primer, the same like spare trucks from the previous episode. The difference is that now I have many more components and it will take much longer. The model was covered with a grey AK interactive primer and I took advantage of the moment before it was completely dry and hard, prepared small parts imitating the leather straps attaching the tarpaulin to the metal eyelets at the edge of the combat compartment. I used thin plastic for this which I cut into equal pieces. Each of them was also cut into a characteristic point and glued to the model. Here and there I shaped them more to make them look better suited to the shape of the model. In German vehicles I usually start with the first layer which is minium, or minia, whatever you call it. It's a mixture of red and brown and it works. Unfortunately for this model my stock was over and I had to prepare the new portion of paint. In addition the jar with red was also almost dry. Luckily I found some more paint from Real Colors and Glossy Shade from Tamiya. I mixed without any specific proportion but you can see for yourself how much paint I poured from each jar. After mixing I have a ready foundation which will be on the model in a moment. Of course I mainly paint surfaces that won't get any other colors which are lower section of the hull and the inside of the wheels. Additionally the support for the gun barrel will also be in this color. This is one of the elements of diversifying the appearance of the model. I will explain it for a moment. Before the correct color appears on the model I decided to do some shading. Generally I'm far away from this technique but here due to the colors of the model I decided to use this method. And I think now it's a good time to tell you what my plan is for the final look of the model. In my opinion the main problem with single color models is that it's very easy to fall into the trap of monotony. You can often find models that are generally very nicely painted but nothing else catches the eye. Due to the fact that my Yak Tiger will be in a uniform dark yellow camo I decided to diversify its appearance by adding color accents. It's the simplest solution and at the same time very effective, all the more so because elements such as tarps and stowage will help me achieve my goal. Thanks to different colors and disturbing the shape by arranging additional elements, the model will have an unusual appearance which at the same time will increase the interest of the viewer. How I'm going to do this? Looking from the front I list the elements that will have different colors than the base camo. Gun barrel in dark grey. Gun barrel support and simmery damages in minium. Tarp at the top of the fighting compartment with additional patches in contrasting colors. Elements of equipment and towing cables. Stowage on the rear of the vehicle. 
common head which will appear on the model in a moment before weathering. It may not seem like a big deal, but even before the model is finished, you can see a definite difference in the overall appearance. For painting the trucks I used the same color that was already prepared in the previous episode. I painted the whole trucks because it's faster and even if I need to make some corrections, it will be easier when most of the color is in place. I used the rest of the paint left in airbrush canister to paint the thin rope for hauling trucks. All the places on the red were corrected in a few seconds. And now I start coloring the model. First a dark grey for the gun bar, which is heat resistant paint. This color was applied in factories and was mainly covered with camo shades, but for the model it's better to have this element not in dark yellow. It will go some more for the jack and the fire extinguisher as well. As you know, dark yellow is the basic color on my model. And if you want to know, I used for this purpose Tamiya XF60. First I masked the trucks and then I started to apply paint on individual surfaces. Two thin coats were enough, but as a third I sprayed a heavily lightened base color. The individual fragments of the model were painted with light shade mentioned a couple seconds before and I used a piece of cardboard to make the edges of colors sharp. The whole painting took a while but I am happy with the effect. Using couple seconds while work is progressing I would like to send massive thanks to all my patrons who support this channel. Without you guys it wouldn't be possible to do this. Have a great day and week. For all of you who are here for the first time, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Please do it now and remember that here you will find movies every Monday and also on Thursdays. It would be nice if you could leave a like and comment and also take a look at my other videos I have on my channel. If you are interested in what I do and would like to see more, then make a visit on my Patreon site where you will find more interesting materials. This is the place in the net where I publish the most right now. Just for patrons, I prepare reports on daily work, articles, ask for their opinion and show advert list films earlier than on the official YouTube channel. In addition, there are a few other interesting perks of being a patron, but you can see for yourself. I think you won't be disappointed and you will see what other projects I do apart from those shown on YouTube. So please consider joining. You can find the link in the description below. Now the corrections and supplementations of painting trucks I mentioned earlier. There wasn't much to do with it. I always wonder whether to leave the accessories separately or stick them to the model. On the one hand I like to have everything in one place glued, arranged and not to worry then after painting when I stick them to the model I will damage the paint or even worse I will spill too much glue on the model. On the other hand when they are stuck on during construction painting them carefully is a tedious job. A difficult choice but when I get one element added the rest goes smoothly. Hmm, okay, 
I won't make you suffer with my talk, because there isn't too much to talk about. I'm going to get a drink and I will be back to painting the markings.
I'm back. Painting the markings is another stage that needs to be explained in a few words. First of all, as I said before, my model doesn't present any specific vehicle. In addition to the crosses, the number 313 will appear there and that will be all when it comes to markings. I was wondering whether to use the decals that are included in the set, but in the end they will only be templates for cutting the correct masks from the masking tape. I decided to use the size of the cross to prepare two pieces of tape. It's important that the knife is sharp because it will make it much easier for us to cut the masking tape. The white paint was applied without thinning to avoid flowing under the tape. Wow, tape is my favorite word right now. The mask is stuck to the simmered surface so the risk of the paint getting under the tape is quite high. And it's best to paint so that the brush doesn't attack the edge of the tape too much but comes of it. I painted the black filling entirely by hand. Thanks to this the whole thing doesn't look as perfect as the decals and in my opinion it's more realistic. All shortcomings are okay for me and I have no problem with it. The numbers were more difficult to paint because the digits are quite narrow and are additionally painted on Simmerit. Here I had to make a few adjustments to make them look ok because the paint was flowing under the tape. On the tarps I decided to test the new dry brush set that I had bought a few days earlier. I haven't done this effect on my models for a long time so now it's time to refresh this technique. The entire stage of work on the Camonet will be shown in the next episode and now just a quick look how the model looks like when almost everything is ready for weathering. There are only two things to do. The first is the small sticker on the fire extinguisher. I used the Echelon decals tested earlier. They are very good and even easier in application than the Archer ones, but truly speaking both of them are the top notch. The second thing are the empty shells from Master Model which I stick to the model with the pigment cement. It doesn't leave any traces and is sufficient for these thinny elements to stick them to the surface. They are not painted right now because there is no need to add the color for them. Yeah, I know if you are familiar with my channel you probably remember that I said that everything on the model should be painted even if it is in the same color, but this is the exception. Only wash will be added and that's enough.
I need to add the machine guns and the whole model is ready for the final presentation. And that's all I wanted to show you today. Thank you for watching my friends. Hope you had a good time and that this video will be useful to someone. My aim was to show everything and explain my modeling techniques in easy way. If there was something unclear or I made some stupid mistake, please let me know in the comments or private message. As I mentioned, in the next episode I will be preparing a Camonet. This movie is now available on my Patreon, so you can check it out. Then I'm going to make the last part with weathering and finishing touches and take another model to my workbench. For now I'm quite sure that it will be something modern and quite big. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, click the like and write a comment. It will take a few moments for you and will help to develop the channel. Do it for me, for humanity and for the universe. Stay tuned for new videos and posts on YouTube, Instagram and TikTok. That's all for today, see you next time, cheers!